Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, first of all, I wrote a quick blog post with some of the updates that we made uh, to our APIs, our data feeds, pretty much all the data that uh, we present on the, the Shield Internet Storm Center websites can be retrieved via these APIs. The goal here is to essentially use the data to augment uh, your uh, log data, as I sometimes put it, to add color uh, to your logs. For example, we just added additional sources to our researcher uh, feed. That's IP addresses that are scanning the internet for vulnerabilities on behalf of companies or uh, universities and such that are enumerating uh, systems that are Listen to open ports that uh, are affected by known vulnerabilities. Shodan senses are probably the two uh, big ones here, but there are, well, I think now about two dozens. And while the list is probably far from complete, it's pretty good uh, estimate of uh, these IP addresses. Also, very experimental uh, feed of recently registered domains. That's updated daily, and uh, we'll see how this goes. It doesn't cover all the top-level domains, in particular for some of the country-level domains. It's uh, difficult uh, to obtain that data, but uh, should uh, cover sort of most of the uh, generic uh, top-level domains and also some of the traditionals like your .coms. So take a look at the blog post if you're interested or at the documentation for our API. I need to still improve the documentation a little bit. Let me know if you run into any problems. Uh, two requests if you're using this. First of all, be a little bit careful with respect to how often you request this. And then also add some contact information, like an email address or something like this, to the user agent. That way, if a particular user is causing problems, we can notify you and don't just have to block requests from you. And then, yes, very important, uh, third item, this is not meant as a block list. This is purely sort of best effort. So uh, please don't use it to block any IP addresses. There are bound to be some false positives. And then, well, uh, we uh, do have some updates about uh, CVE 2021-4444, and I'm sure you know all your CVEs, but that's the MSHTML vulnerability that's currently being exploited and still not patched. So initially, I stated that there is no warning uh, from uh, Word uh, when you open an infected document. Well, that's not entirely true. If you open a document in protected view, then you will uh, get a warning and you have to click enable editing. But protected view is only enabled if the document has the mark of the web. The mark of the web is metadata being added to the document if you're downloading it from the internet. However, and uh, Will Dorman has figured that out, if, for example, you're downloading an ISO file, that ISO file now includes the Word document. Well, in that case, the Word document does not contain this mark. And if you're opening the ISO file, well, uh, the uh, Word document uh, will open the ActiveX control will install without a warning because there is no protected view. I'll link uh, to an article on Bleeping Computer that has uh, more uh, details about this and also some of the statements of Will Dorman uh, for additional uh, context. There's also now more detail available about the vulnerability. Uh, Kevin Beaumont uh, did a tweet about this. Apparently, it sort of comes down uh, to a good old directory traversal vulnerability that uh, is uh, being used here. There are also some statements that uh, the mitigation that uh, Microsoft presented is not perfect and uh, can also uh, be uh, bypassed. So lots of interesting things happening with this vulnerability. Definitely something to watch. And at this point, no word if we'll see a patch for it on a Tuesday, of course. Given the timeline, it may be questionable if Microsoft is able to release a patch that quickly. 
And if you are running a public a GitHub project and uh, you accept uh, pull requests, you may want to disable the check spelling community workflow if you have uh, done so. Uh, this uh, workflow is supposed to basically check any pull requests for spelling errors. I certainly could use something like this, but the problem is that it doesn't check correctly for symlinks and uh, symlinks from the .github slash actions slash advice dot txt file to proc self environ will then actually essentially spell check the environment variables and include them as a comment to the pull request which of course then leaks all of your environment variables including any secrets stored in those variables which inevitably will include your github token Check spelling has been fixed, but you have to make sure you're actually using the latest version and you have to make sure you're using the latest version in all of your repositories. This issue was found by Justin Steven and uh, you can find more details in Justin's uh, GitHub repository, of course, and I'll link to this in the show notes. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.